at the end of yesterday's video, we had just put a little bit of CA glue right there where those four lines that come up join. And I'm sure that by now it's cured. Now, in all likelihood, I am never going to need these again. But down in my workshop, I have four little bolts that probably will fit these. In fact, I've, I've got way more than four bolts. Um, I just can't bring myself to throw them out, you know. Can't seem to bring myself to get this off either. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that just sort of chipped off, didn't it? Okay, now let's just see if we can pick it up. We'll grab hold of it by the holder downer here. We'll use that as sort of a, like a hook, if I can get it in there right. Now, all being well, Oh, let's do this differently. I'll just pick it up, put this in. Okay, now it should balance. This is going to be the first time. That's not too bad. It should lean more forward, so can we get it on the other side of the knot? Yeah, there we go. That is perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. I think if we uh, can just somehow cut this off, not too low or we're going to be screwed. I'll eventually get it. I want to kind of stretch these out here so we can see where the glue is and where it isn't. This just isn't working out the way I had planned. Maybe what I need is a, a larger piece of tape here. Okay, now. My goodness. I thought I'd eventually get it. Okay, finally. Now let's put the macro lens on and we'll take a look right here. Okay, I'm looking straight down on it, and uh, it appears that the CA glue goes right to about right down almost to where these lines all begin to separate. Now, because I'm, I'm going to err on the side of having it too much than too little, um, I, my concern is that these that this joint could shatter because it's brittle right now. So, uh, well, here goes. If this uh, if this doesn't work, a lot of work just went uh, down the drain here. Well, it uh, seems to be okay. Yeah, seems to be okay. Maybe we'll uh, put the super macro on and take a look at that. This is turning out to be a little bit more finicky than I thought it was going to. Uh, for your photo buffs, I'm stopping the lens down to f8. 
and it still looks pretty good in the monitor there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the light around and hopefully the reflection will change and it will cast sort of a different look on it maybe I'm getting a little too close there with it go back a little bit here around this way that's the best I can do no I can't really touch this without uh, making it swing here but you see where the easy line goes into the hole and when I had used the pin to make the hole well, I've got to be careful when I talk um, the uh, the plastic sort of uh, got pushed out, sort of the way a moon crater is. Um, yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's sort of folded back over the crust of the surface of the moon, so to speak. Um, well, those of you who have been to the moon know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm thinking if I took an, maybe a sharpened toothpick or something, and if I could push that back, I don't know. You you don't. Once again, it's one of those things you don't see unless you look at it. Like right now, you're looking at it through the super macro, at its maximum. So uh, naturally, it looks a hundred times worse than it really is. Um, I don't know. It, it really bothered me when I saw that yesterday when I was editing, and I realized how bad it was. Tony had gone to such a lot of work to make this model, and then I go and sort of you know, butcher it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can do anything about that or not. I could sort of give it a bit of a try, but I don't want to accidentally maybe slip and break the canopy off or some crazy thing like that. Or maybe, as I say, nobody's going to see it anyway. Just after it was a little bit too late to get it edited into yesterday's video, the package from the hobby store came. That's pretty good service. Ordered it in the morning, delivered in the afternoon. Can't ask for much better than that, unless you go get it yourself. As I'm signing for the package, the guy's looking at me, and then all of a sudden he says, Hey, you're that guy who's making that big model of the Bismarck. I can hardly wait to get home after work so I can watch it. Okay, I just lied. He never said that, but wouldn't it have been nice if he did? Would have made me feel good. Okay, everybody likes a package opening. It's going to be a big surprise even though we know what is supposed to be in there. In other words, did they maybe send the wrong paint? Are we going to get to hear old Ron swear? I can't fight my way into a paper bag here. Alright, this should open up. Okay. I think you can see that. Looks like the right stuff to me. All right. So now we've got the flat, we've got the gloss, we've got the micro set, and the Salva set. <clears throat> now, what, what I understand about this is that I know from using this for the, you know, like 40 years ago, I gave myself a real bad scare using this. I, I didn't realize it, it would completely dissolve the decal if you left it on long enough, and I, uh, I just about lost a little decal. I remember that happening. That's why I know this is really strong. This is, I think this is supposed to be much the same, only it's a little milder, and from what I understand. Um, anyway, I'm not going to do anything with that today, but uh, what we will do is uh, eventually we'll cut up one of those extra decals and we will, uh, uh, you know, do it. I just want to show you that I do know how to do it right. Okay. I know that I've mentioned this before, but uh, having fun for me, this this is what this is all about. Uh, yeah, we sell fun. That's that's that's. That's sort of what they're doing for 
especially guys like me. Um, and I, I know that there are certain aspects of this build where I could have done better, and when we do the hood, maybe I will do better. For instance, now I'll be able to do a better job on the uh, decals. Um, however, we sell fun, and that's what it's all about in this uh, hobby, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I don't even have my macro lens on here. And you can see where the CA glue ran down the side of the fuselage there, how it, it, if the light hits it just right, or once again just wrong, it, it catches your eye. And you can see, you know, where the CA is there. Let's see if we can get it on the other side. Well, this side isn't too bad. Okay, but this side is. And I'm just wondering if we take that flat paint that we just got and just try and cover this up, will it take the shine off? Uh, I don't, I know somebody might say, well, why don't you just put a little bit of green on it? And well, the reason being is that the green that Tony used may not be exactly the same as the green that I've got. So uh, then it's going to show up. But why don't I take my little tiny brush and a little bit of that flat and uh, just see if we can cover that up there. And then there's the one at the back isn't too bad. Um, that, that bothers me. I don't know why, but it just does. If you can see it with my normal lens, well, you know, when you move in really close, you're going to really see it. Now, you just knew I was not going to be able to leave well enough alone here. I had to show it to you really close. But don't complain, I could have slipped on the super macro and shown it really close. Normally, I would not shake clear varnish or urethane. I might stir it very slowly, though, just to make sure that it was, you know, all the chemicals were mixed together. However, you don't need to shake it. In this case, we do because it's a, you know, it's a flat. It's got little particles in there. In fact, you may notice it'll look a little bit cloudy, almost like very thinned out milk. And I think that's what gives it its uh, dull look on the surface. I'm not a chemist. I don't know for sure, but I think that's the way it works. Okay, I've used uh, flat paint before, flat clear before, down in the workshop. You know, like urethane, semi-gloss flat, gloss, so I'm kind of familiar with clears, but I've never used the Tamiya flat paint, flat clear, and uh, I'm pretty sure that this is probably the same kind of thing that, that Tony used on his, on his model here, except that he, he would have sprayed it. Now, I just want to put it on there. I know that at first it's going to look worse. But I'm hoping that this is not going to show up too bad here once this dries. I'm going to get it up up here. Oh, do I need to put any down here? No, I hope that's not going to dry and look like a glob. Um, let's just let that cure and we'll or rather dry and uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll leave the camera running and uh, we'll do the time-lapse thing. It should work out okay. It doesn't cost anything. Okay, about three minutes has passed here, maybe four. And uh, I do believe it worked. Now, of course, you can see where the CA glue is, but I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get in there and with a microscope and try and scrape that level, sand it down. Now, I know some people might, but I'm not going to. But at least I got rid of that bright, shining flash they were getting. And it could be that after an hour or so, it's going to be even more flat. Uh, so it worked. So I'm just going to go ahead and maybe see if I can do something on the other side here, which actually isn't too bad. Now you can kind of see it right where the easy line goes into the holes that I drilled. I, I decided I was not going to try and uh, smear those uh, uh, crater edges uh, back into the uh, impact zone. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. No one's going to see it anyway. 
We are expecting another package here today, and I think probably most of you remember what it was that I had ordered. Yeah, the S word. The thing that everybody had suggested that I get, and I decided I'd finally get it after I don't need it anymore. <laughs> well, we can use it for the hood, right? Anyway, we'll see what happens. It might be here in time for today's episode, and if not, well, tomorrow, if it arrives. Now, because I'm going to undoubtedly be getting this uh, flat clear on the uh, easy line, I uh, want to have the easy line stretched out in its sort of normal position here. Let's see if I can grab hold of this carefully here. Don't want to get it on the canopy because the canopy is supposed to look shiny. Okay. I won't be able to use the time lapse on this because the aircraft is swinging around way too much. I'm guessing about 10 minutes has passed here now. And we don't have anything which you would call really glaring that is going to catch your eye. So uh, I think we did about as good as we're going to do here. Now let's see how we can hook this onto the crane. Now I know it's going to be a little bit hard to see from that distance, but right on the bottom there, there is a little tiny hook. And I'd like to have it look normal. So I know that we could take this And we can sort of hook it in here. I haven't tried this yet, so I don't know if it'll work. Well, I think we could we could make it work, but it wouldn't. It just wouldn't look normal if we were to just hook it on there. Um, so I got to think of what. How can I fasten this now? Um, do I just maybe glue the bottom of, of this hook? to the top of this easy line, just very, very carefully. That, that might actually look okay. Um, I'll think about it. In the meantime, it is past the time that the uh, post office said they'd deliver our package. So I think our package opening is definitely going to be tomorrow now. And uh, I think maybe I'm going to give this video, this episode, a bit of a pause here and think about what I'm going to do here because once it's done, it's done. So, thank you for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.